Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Well, thank you. Elliot, Senator Feingold, Allen, friends, I want to thank the Pride Addenda for having me here tonight and thank Anne for her introduction and for mentioning Irish, because my father gets upset when that gets left out. It's an honor to be here this evening in the company of so many people who have done so much for our community. You know, it occurred to me coming here tonight that some people in the audience probably have no idea what the City Council does, much less what the City Council does. But that's okay. Before I started working at the Council, it was a mystery to me as well. So I'll simply tell you that among other activities, we're the ones who propose and pass the city's laws and hold those exciting three-hour hearings at City Hall. <laughs> now, for those of you who can't make it down to join us, you can go to Channel 74 and watch the proceedings from gavel to gavel. And I think you'll see that democracy in action is almost as thrilling as Grey's Anatomy. In all seriousness, since becoming the Speaker of the City Council, I've gone to many events, and I've delivered remarks on numerous topics of concern to New Yorkers. For some reason, though, tonight's invitation to speak before all of you made me apprehensive. My poor partner, Kim, I was yelling last night in the house, why did I say yes? I should have said no. I should have turned it down. Um, and it wasn't. I wasn't apprehensive just because, along with every gay man and lesbian in this room, I'm a big fan of Anne Hathaway's. <laughs> I love the movie. Sometimes I try to play Meryl Streep in senior staff meetings. With <laughs> but, and some say, well, but that's another conversation. Um, so given this apprehension, I did what any good New Yorker would do in my situation. I talked to a therapist. <laughs> Not my therapist, a staff member of mine who used to be a therapist. She was, of course, amused by my apprehension. She asked, why would you be nervous? You're going to talk to a bunch of gay people. These are your people. She was right. But the truth is, that was exactly why I was so anxious about t this evening. The bottom line is, I feel an enormous responsibility to our LGBT community. And it's because of the deep gratitude I feel to so many of you in this room that I was so apprehensive. Thank you all for working tirelessly on behalf of our community, and thank you all for your support of me. You have literally brought me to this place, and in doing so, I hope you have lifted our community and our struggle for equal rights. Every day when I walk into City Hall, I recognize the tremendous responsibility of my position. Deciding with my colleagues how to spend $50 billion of your taxpayer dollars, and working on initiatives and laws to improve our city. Those are some of the reasons. But another reason is that I try to never forget where I came from. Much of the work I do is obviously not specifically related to LGBT issues. My experience and the experience we all share as LGBT people is part of the prism of my daily consciousness. And I'm often lucky enough to hear from people throughout the country who helped make my responsibility abundantly clear. A month after I was sworn in as speaker, I received a letter from Joe, a young man in California. He wrote, I'm a junior at a secondary school in Los Angeles. I came out to my parents at 14. My parents with the coming out experience were amazing. I then came out to all my friends and families, brought back my gay straight alliance at my school, and organized a pro-gay rally of teens to show support for marriage equality. He does deserve a round of applause for that. I tell you my story, he said, not because it's unique or unusual, 
because if it were not for officials like you, I would not be treated as an equal by friends, family, or in school. Thank you for your courageous and unwavering leadership. When I called Joe to tell him how grateful I was for his letter, I told him that it's actually courageous people like him that make it possible for there to be people like me in the positions like this. And in that spirit, I want to acknowledge each of you this evening and everyone at the Pride Agenda, Alan in particular, for your courage and your leadership. Without you behind me and other openly gay elected officials and alongside all of us, there's very little we could accomplish. Coming here tonight made me think about some of the milestones we've reached, and we have reached a lot. 25 years ago, Karen Thompson was forced into a legal battle for the right to visit her partner Sharon in the hospital after Sharon was severely disabled in a car accident. As we know, they won that fight in 1991. 20 years ago, we didn't have a gay rights law. 15 years ago, we didn't have a domestic partnership law. Five years ago, we didn't have a transgender civil rights law. And a month ago, we didn't have a soon-to-be governor who has said he not only supports gay marriage, but he will introduce legislation to make it a reality.